Quick review, a matrix is a grid of numbers which represents a linear transformation over vectors via left multiplication. The product of two matrices A and B is defined as the matrix that represents the composition of the linear transformations that A and B represent. If you work out the algebra, you get this definition of the matrix product. Calculating this naively takes O of nmp time, or O of n cubed time if you're multiplying two n by n matrices. This makes matrix multiplication a very fundamental and important operation in linear algebra, so we would like to have a fast algorithm for it. The first step to making a faster algorithm is realizing that each of the two matrices can be split up by rows and columns into blocks and then each of the blocks can be treated as if they were numbers. As long as the dimensions of the blocks are suitable and their products are defined, then you do in fact get the correct matrix product. One thing you have to be careful about in this case is that commutativity no longer works because now we're working with elements that are themselves matrices instead of numbers. This will be important later. For our purposes, each of the A blocks need to have the same dimension and each of the B blocks also has to have the same dimension but the A blocks don't need to have the same dimension as the B blocks. Consider splitting each matrix in a two by two fashion evenly. The naive algorithm will require eight multiplications between these blocks. By the master theorem, this just gives us another O of n cubed time algorithm. In 1969, however, Strassen found out that you only need seven multiplications. By the master theorem, this yields an algorithm of time O of n to the log base 2 of 7, or about O of n to the 2.808, and this was the first ever discovered subcubic algorithm. In the same paper, Strassen also showed that matrix inversion and matrix determinant have the same asymptotic time complexity as matrix multiplication, also using a similar 2 by 2 divide and conquer argument. Thus, finding a fast matrix multiplication algorithm is even more important. Strassen's algorithm started the field of fast matrix multiplication, and today the runtime exponent has been reduced from 2.808 to around 2.37188. Initially, people tried directly finding alternative block multiplication divide and conquer strategies similar to that of Strassen. But this was, and to this day, is still quite difficult. Three major advancements were made in this field. First, people found that the divide and conquer does not need to be exact. It only needs to be arbitrarily precise. This will be explained in more detail later. Then people found that you can do multiple disjoint matrix products at once, and then combine those in a non-trivial way into one very large square matrix product. Finally, since 1986, all of the fastest matrix multiplication algorithms have been based on something called the laser method, and there have been diminishing returns over the past 30 or so years. Most algorithms after Strassen have enormous constant and polylog factors in their time complexity, and they're only faster than the naive algorithm for immense matrices, so they're impractical. In the meantime, there's also been a separate thread of matrix multiplication algorithms with more moderate constant factors. These algorithms also all use direct divide and conquer. Some of the more recent results are due to Alpha Tensor, which received considerable media attention a couple of months ago. In order to go beyond Strassen, we need to figure out the general form of a divide and conquer scheme. Say that we split our matrices into an m by n and an n by p fashion. Then our target blocks are as follows. We want to obtain these target blocks by first calculating several products and then expressing our targets as linear combinations of these products. Notice the unusual indexing we use for the coefficients when calculating the target blocks. This will be important later when we consider symmetries. We don't want terms that involve three or more of our original A and B blocks multiplied together. So each of our products is restricted to a linear combination of A and B blocks multiplied by another linear combination of A and B blocks. We also cannot use commutativity here because our blocks are themselves matrices, not numbers. 
So now each product is restricted to be a linear combination of A blocks multiplied by a linear combination of B blocks. If we represent these linear combinations using coefficients, and then plug these products into our desired expressions for our target blocks, we end up with this system of equations. These are known as the Brent equations. Solving this system of equations is equivalent to coming up with a valid divide and conquer scheme for matrix multiplication. We can collect the right-hand sides of these equations into a tensor, or a multidimensional array. We call this the MNP matrix multiplication tensor. Using the multidimensional outer product, we can rewrite this system of equations into what is known as a tensor rank decomposition. If we have R different sum ends, we call this an R rank decomposition. Finally, the rank of a tensor is the lowest such R such that there exists an R rank decomposition of that tensor. So if we have an R rank decomposition of an MNP tensor, that means that its rank is at most R. Strassen's algorithm corresponds to this rank 7 decomposition of the 222 tensor. A matrix multiplication tensor has ones at indices of the form ij, jk, ki, and zeros everywhere else. If you cyclically rotate the indices by two units, you get the npm tensor. If you reverse the order of the indices, you get the mpn tensor. And crucially, you can replicate these transformations by manipulating the alpha, beta, and gamma terms in any rank decomposition of the original MNP tensor. This means that all matrix multiplication tensors involving any ordering of M, N, and P all have the same rank, because any R rank decomposition of one of them can be transformed to become R rank decompositions of all of the others. There is one more type of symmetry worth noting, known as sandwiching. Given a rank decomposition of a matrix multiplication tensor, you can insert matrices and their inverses as shown, and end up with another valid decomposition of that same tensor. This property is unique to matrix multiplication tensors. One really important thing you can represent with tensors is combining two divide and conquer schemes together. If you have an MNP scheme, what you can do with each of the products is calculate them using another M prime, N prime, P prime divide and conquer scheme. You can express this in tensor formulation using Kronecker products. And thus, this means that if you have an R rank decomposition of MNP and an R prime rank decomposition of M prime, N prime, P prime, then you get an R times R prime rank decomposition of M, M prime, N, N prime, P, P prime. Thus, if we have an M, N, P divide and conquer scheme, we can chronicle product itself with its cyclic shifts and get an M, N, P, M, N, P, M, N, P with an R cubed rank decomposition. This means we now have a square matrix divide and conquer scheme, and we can directly turn it into a recursive algorithm for square matrix multiplication. Using the master theorem again, this will yield a runtime of O of n to the log base MNP of R cubed, or 3 times log base MNP of R. And this exponent is what we want to minimize. From 1969, no one was able to beat Strassen until 1978, when Penn used a technique called trilinear aggregation. In 1979, however, Beatney et al. introduced the concept of border rank. The idea of border rank is to create a decomposition that depends on a free variable epsilon. The resulting tensor is not exactly equal to the matrix multiplication tensor, but as epsilon approaches zero, it converges to the desired tensor in the limit. Beanie et al. first analyzed 2x2 two two matrix multiplication, where one of the terms in the input is forced to be zero. They found a way to approximate the matrix product using five multiplications. This corresponds to a five border rank decomposition of the 222 tensor, but where two of its non-zero elements have been removed. Then by applying two versions of this decomposition, one can get a 10 border rank decomposition of the 322 tensor.
The usefulness of border rank is that it can be turned into an exact algorithm where the runtime exponent can get arbitrarily close to what it would be if the border rank were exact to begin with. One proof of this is due to Bleza. The idea is to split a border rank decomposition by different powers of epsilon. By doing so, one can turn a border rank decomposition into an exact decomposition whose total rank is asymptotically not that much higher than the border rank. Then, given a border rank decomposition of a matrix multiplication tensor, one can raise it to a really high Kronecker power of S. Then apply Bleza's proof to get an exact decomposition and end up with a runtime exponent that approaches the desired runtime exponent as S is taken to infinity. A simpler method is due to Chan, where you treat epsilon as an indeterminate, and instead of dealing with numbers, you now deal with power series in terms of epsilon. One can then show that when multiplying two n by n matrices, the maximum possible degree that any of the power series can achieve is asymptotically bounded by recursion depth, which is O over log n. This means a border rank decomposition can be turned directly into a square matrix multiplication algorithm that is O of n to the target exponent times a polylog factor. Either way, Beanie et al. showed that omega can become arbitrarily close to 3 log base 12 of 10, which is less than 2.780. In 1981, Shen Haga made a breakthrough Instead of directly approximating a matrix multiplication with a border rank decomposition, you can approximate several disjoint matrix multiplications, and then use a more systematic, non-trivial method to combine these disjoint multiplications into one big matrix multiplication tensor. This is known as Schoenhager's tau theorem, and he was able to lower the runtime exponent to 2.522. In tensor language, you can represent a set of disjoint matrix multiplications by taking the respective matrix multiplication tensors, stacking them diagonally, and then filling the rest of the space with zeros. Chan has written some nice notes showcasing two examples of the Tau theorem being used, as well as some other earlier matrix multiplication decompositions. In 1986, Strassen came back, this time with what he called the laser method, and this is the current state of the art. He showed that the tensor you decompose doesn't even need to represent disjoint matrix multiplications. Instead, you pick some certain tensor and show that a high enough power of it can be degenerated into a disjoint sum of matrix multiplication tensors. He achieved a runtime exponent of 2.479, then Coppersmith and Vinograd improved this to 2.376, and since then, the matrix multiplication exponent has barely improved. The main reason why most of these algorithms are impractical is because they rely on decompositions of extremely large matrix multiplication tensors. Because of this, some people have stayed focused on finding exact decompositions of small to moderately sized tensors. One of the biggest figures in this area is Pan, who has created the technique known as trilinear aggregation. Pan observed that almost all the non-zero terms of the NNN tensor come in cyclically shifted triplets. So it is possible to cover three of them at once with a single product and then apply correction terms. Most of the correction terms can be compressed into O of n squared rank because enough of their coordinates line up that you can factor them. However, a few of the correction terms don't have enough coordinates that line up, so they cannot be compressed in this manner. To solve this, Pan expanded from n to 2n. Now, instead of covering three non-zero terms at a time, we are trying to cover 24 non-zero terms with eight products, and then apply correction terms. Pan carefully constructed eight products such that all the inacceptable correction terms cancel out and the rest can be compressed into O of n squared products. After doing this, he obtained a runtime exponent of 2.796. Over the next few years, he would improve his method of applying correction terms, ultimately reducing the runtime exponent down to 2.7734. In 1990, 
In recent years, more people have been trying to find low rank decompositions of small matrix multiplication tensors directly, mostly with the help of computers. There are a few different approaches. One of them is to create a numerical approximation of a decomposition and then turn it exact. Smirnov in 2013 did this using iterative least squares and found a rank 40 decomposition of the 336 tensor, which achieves runtime exponent of 2.7743, which is really close to Pan's result from 1982. Another technique is to only search for decompositions over the integers mod 2, because doing so restricts the search space as much as possible, and it can help narrow down integer solutions, since any integer solution can be converted into an integer mod 2 solution. Integer solutions are the most preferred kinds of solutions, since they work over arbitrary fields. Courtois, Bard, and Holm found a rank 23 decomposition of the 333 tensor by using a Boolean satisfiability solver, and were able to lift it to the integers. Hoyle, Kawas, and Seidel found thousands of additional solutions over Ma2, most of which could also be lifted to the integers. However, no one has yet found a rank 22 decomposition. DeepMind's alpha tensor used reinforcement learning and found a rank 47 decomposition of 444, which is better than using a two-layer Strassen. Interestingly, this rank 47 solution cannot be extended to the integers. Kawas and Mosbauer use a new technique called flip graphs. What you do is start with an arbitrary decomposition, then repeatedly apply flip transformations where you change two product terms at a time that share a common factor, and if possible, reduce the total rank by one using a specific factoring technique. If you construct a graph where each vertex represents a decomposition, and two vertices are adjacent if they are one flip transformation apart, then we are essentially taking a random walk in this graph. Kawas and Mosbauer matched many previous records, including over 100,000 rank 47 decompositions for 444 over integers mod 2. They also improved a few records, including some set by alpha tensor. For their 555 record over mod 2, they actually used alpha tensor solution as the initial decomposition. Very recently, Deza et al. has used a completely different but in some ways simpler approach, constraint programming. The idea is that you assign variables one at a time, and each time you assign a variable, that might rule out possible assignments of other variables. It's sort of like solving a Sudoku. Using constraint programming, Deza et al. was able to find Strassen's algorithm in less than a second, compared to a few minutes for alpha tensor. They also found a rank 23 decomposition of the 333 tensor in about an hour, matching later min's record. Where does the future of tensor decomposition stand? Personally, I think there is a lot of hope in decomposing small matrix multiplication tensors. One thing that will become very important is symmetries. We already know that a general MNP tensor has sandwiching symmetry, and that an NNN tensor, in addition to that, also has cyclic and reversal symmetry. A lot of low rank decompositions also happen to satisfy some sort of symmetry. The decomposition that Strassen's algorithm is equivalent to has both cyclic and sandwiching symmetry. Several rank 23 decompositions of the 333 tensor also have cyclic symmetry. And Deza et al. in their constraint programming approach also enforced cyclic symmetry in their decompositions, and that was how they were able to find a rank 23 decomposition of 333. Enforcing symmetries on decompositions massively reduces the search space. And the fact that many low rank decompositions also satisfy symmetry makes this approach promising. Overall, the field of fast matrix multiplication has a rich history and in recent years has been given new life, with alpha tensor, flip graphs, and constraint programming all being published within the last year. Who knows what other advancements may be on the way.